Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Um, let us sing and praise the Lord. Thank you.
Yes, I surrender. I surrender. Yes, I surrender. I surrender. Yes, I surrender. Let your glory fill this place. Let your own consuming fire build a tabernacle and purify our hearts. Surround us in this place. Breathe new life within us. Send a refreshing Lord to saturate our hearts. Let your glory fill this place. Let your all consuming fire build a tabernacle and purify our hearts. And surround us in this place. Breathe new life within us. Send a refreshing Lord to saturate our hearts. Shower down, shower down. 
that your own consuming fire build a tabernacle and purify our hearts. Surround us in this place. Breathe new life within us. Send a refreshing Lord to saturate our hearts. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated, everybody. And you can hear the emotion as we sing this morning, as we look to God. Come, come be with us, God. God, we need you. And as we lift up the pain and the anguish of our nation, as we gather for worship today, we come to God. And we don't know where else to turn. We look to God for God's healing, for God's presence, God's comfort, but also for that energy to be God's people of peace in this world. Amen? It's that renewed call to all of us, it seems, every week, um, that call to be peacemakers in, in a nation with another horrible tragedy. We lift up the families of those lost. We pray for an end to this senseless violence. We pray for peace. And we look to Jesus. We look to our risen Lord Jesus, and we see and we know and we trust that God's power for life and love is greater. Amen? Amen. So today we look at Paul's letter to the Philippians where he is encouraging community to have the same mind as Jesus. And I'm going to encourage you to listen to this reading. What would it mean if we had the same mind as Jesus Christ? How would that change how we live our lives, how our community lives, what our nation and our world would experience? And Paul uses an early Christian hymn to make his point. So I pray that we all be open to God's message for us today. It is a blessing to worship together in person. Those who are able to be here this morning, we don't take this for granted. And all please wear masks uh, together and you will feel some air flowing as we continue to do these measures for the concern of our health and safety of all, especially the most vulnerable in our midst. Welcome to you worshiping online today through the blessing of technology. When we get to the time of Holy Communion, if you're worshiping online, you may have bread, wine, grape juice uh, ready to go to share communion wherever you are. And then if you are here in the sanctuary, an opportunity either to use the prepackaged communion that you'll find those elements at the welcome table, or you can ask for those when, um, at the communion time, or come forward and receive bread in your hand and wine and grape juice and we do that in a continuous manner. 
we share the body and blood of Jesus, we recognize and feel his presence with us, and we're sent out to serve in this week. For families with children, we have PewPal coloring sheets that are available at the welcome table for kids to use. We also have the cry room at the back. We have nursery attendant Rebecca, who is prepared to uh, provide child care for any smaller children, and children's worship time happens after the scripture readings today, and that will be down in the basement classroom. Kids will come back up in time for communion today. So lots of opportunities for children. As we begin worship today, we acknowledge that these are the traditional homelands of the Puyallup people of the Coast Salish Nation. And we lift up the vision that God has given us here at Peace Lutheran Church to be a diverse community of faith right here in the hilltop of Tacoma where all are welcome. A community that is spirit-filled, compassionate, healthy, reconciled, and just. We are not there. We're not at that vision. We are on the journey, and God's Spirit is leading us today. I wanted to um, have us do what we always do as we begin worship, and that is acknowledge again that our God is a God of peace. In the fullest sense of shalom, that's justice, harmony, mutual respect, love for one another, and that God calls us to be peacemakers, an opportunity for us to share God's peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. Please take time now and share God's peace with the folks around you. God's peace. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for our peace family, for our church. Um, Lord, just please open our ears and our hearts as we listen to our sermon today and to our, um, our words from the Bible. Lord, we just uh, want to be here for you and we want to open our, be there for each other and open our ears and our hearts to listen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. New Testament reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you to will and to work for his good pleasure. End of the reading. Amen. Gospel reading this morning found in Luke chapter 6, verses 43 to 45. Jesus says, uh, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its fruit, its own fruit, rather. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Gospel of our Lord. Amen. be seated everybody. I'm going to try something here before the kids go to children's worship time and that is inviting kids to come forward for a children's message. I know we don't have a lot of kids in here but do you guys want to come up and just sit right here? Hazel you want to come up? Come on up and sit by Luke and Joy. All right. We haven't done this for a long time but let's have the kids up here. Okay guys. So, listen, listen, there is, oh, 
All right, good. We got more kids. Wonderful. Cool. There we go. Yeah, it's good to see you guys. Do you ever write people letters or make people cards? Raise your hand if you've ever made a card or written a letter or something. Yep, yep. I know, yeah, in, with, in our house, we do cards a lot. Do you know that there's this guy in the Bible named Paul, and he writes people letters. He, what he did was he went to different places, and God used him to start different churches, and then he would move on to another place, and he would send letters and cards to the people at the other churches that he started because he couldn't be there in person, so he sent them mail. Isn't that really cool? So for the, the church that was in Rome, he wrote a letter that we call the Romans, letter to the Romans. For the church that was in a place called Corinth, he wrote letters that we call first and second Corinthians. For the church that was in a place called Philippi, he wrote a letter that we call Philippians. So if Paul would write us a letter here in Tacoma, what do you think that letter could be called? Washington's. Well, maybe. Yep, good guess. Anybody else? Maybe Tacomans, right? If it's written to people living in the hilltop, it could be Hilltopians, the letter to the Hilltopians, right? Or maybe P Lake Woodians. It depends on where you are, right? So guess what? I wrote you a letter. This is from Pastor John to Peaceans. You are the Peaceans. You are the kids of peace. Peaceans. Okay, it doesn't make sense. It's kind of silly, but... Dear Peaceans, I mean kids of peace, God's peace be with you. I'm writing to remind you that as your pastor, I love you and I want the best for you. I also want you to know God loves you so much more. God loves you more than you can ever imagine. And God is with you always, even when you're having a bad day. Never forget that. God Bless you, your pastor, Pastor John. What do you think? Good? All right. <laughs> Guys, so I hope you know that God loves you, just as my letter said, and God is with you always. Now, if you'd like to go to children's worship time, you can, and you can come back later in the worship service. Thank you. You guys are awesome. If you want to help me preach my sermon, you can too. I miss those children's messages. That was the first one we've done for like two and a half years or something. I mean, usually I'm just talking to all of you as children of God. I like it when the kids can come up, right? What a blessing. Okay, question for you all. What is your favorite hymn or Christian song? Just call it out. Favorite hymn or Christian song? Oh, go ahead. Come thou fount of every blessing. Yes. You are my hiding place. The sparrow. His eye is on the sparrow. Wow, people are really excited. Amazing grace. Dogmar, go ahead. Uh, Mighty Fortress is our God in German. Okay, so that's, there we go. That's good. Melody. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Rock. What is it? I can imagine. Yes. Robin. How great thou art. Others. Anybody else? My hope is built on nothing less. Go ahead, Vera. Jesus loves me. That's not silly at all. No? Okay. So, good. I'm, I'm talking about hymns and Christian songs today, so if you didn't get to throw out the name of yours, be thinking about it. 
Uh, at home in the evening, as the kids are going to bed, we like to sing. We sing our repertoire of songs, more when there's time, less when there's not, right? And one of the songs we like to sing is This Little Light of Mine. That's a good one, too. You at home, I'm wondering what your favorite hymns are. Now think of the words, some of the words of that song or that hymn. Think of those words. How do the words minister to you? How do they speak to you? How do they comfort you? How do they strengthen you? How do they call you out? How is God working through that hymn or that song for you? Good words. Good message. Here's the question. Do we let these hymns shape our lives? We're singing them. Do we let them shape our lives? Sometimes words set to music are some of the most powerful words of all because hymns have this staying power, don't they? Uh, Vera said, Jesus loves me, this I know, join in, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. We were just talking about the Bible with the 7th and 8th grade Feet to Faith class, and that's the main message. Jesus loves us. God loves us deeply. The message, God is love. That message comes to a song through the song. The songs that we sing about God and God's word have a way of finding a permanent place in our memories and in our souls, really. Singing has a way of connecting with our emotions, our feelings. As we were singing today, come by here, Lord. Someone's crying. Someone needs you, God. Come by here. That is the prayer that we pray today, especially with all that's happening in our nation. Singing lifts our spirits, right? We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. I know we could keep going with this. I'm going to stop us there, right? Or, or bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Singing lifts our spirits. Singing can remind us of hope when we are in that place of despair or sorrow. Singing can bring us there, especially when we have good musicians. Amen? Amen. Praise God for our musicians here at peace. Yes, thanks be to God. Singing can remind us who we are. We're children of God. We are spiritual people. So when we sing about the promises of God, it's like those promises become more real for us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. That promise of God's unconditional love that is for each and every one of us. Sometimes songs can be a better sermon than sermons are, right? So if I see you uh, when I'm preaching, picking up your hymnal and glancing through it, I know what you're doing. That's okay. That, that's fine. You do what you need to do to hear God's word, right? Um, listen to God speak to you through hymns today, through spiritual songs. Singing can help us confess our faith. Even in the most difficult of circumstances, Martin Luther said, when when we sing, we pray twice. Yes. And 
even in times of the death of a loved one, when we're gathered for a memorial service or a funeral, we need to hear those, that word of God, the good news, the message of God's power for life. And we can praise Jesus, amazingly, that we can praise Jesus even in the midst of death because we trust God's power over death. So we can sing, I don't know who said it, when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Singing reaches us in the place of the soul. Songs can voice our faith in God and God's call. God can help us through singing to be about God's justice making in this world, God's peacemaking in this world. So on Justice and Reconciliation Sunday at Peace, we can gather around the outside of the sanctuary in a circle and we, we sing a song that we need today. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. my heart I do believe we shall overcome someday amen my point is this we sing so that what we sing may be true for us amen we sing so that what we sing, of course, when we're singing these strong hymns of faith, may be true for us. The Apostle Paul knew the power of singing hymns. In fact, he places a hymn, we call it the Christ hymn, right in the middle of his letter to the Philippians. Here it is. And they probably, those folks of the early church, probably sang this hymn in worship. Maybe each time they gathered. We don't know. Here's my wondering question. Did they think about these words? Did they sing these words so that what they sang may be true for them? Did they put these words into action, into life in their community? Will we today let this hymn shape us now in our world, in our community? What does the hymn mean and how can it shape our lives today? Before Paul shares the words of the hymn, he encourages the Christian community in verse 2. He says, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. You might be like, He's talking to a whole community here, right? How can they be of the same mind? That can't be what he's really saying. Does that mean they cannot disagree about anything? That there's no disagreement? There's, that they have to put aside all their differences and just all be the same? I mean, people disagree in the church all the time, don't they? People disagree over interpretation of God's word, over the focus of the mission that God is calling us into, over the role of the church in politics, uh, over how money collected by the church should be spent. Some even disagree over the color of the carpet. Okay, now I, 
Thankfully, I haven't heard anyone really disagreeing here at peace over the color of the carpet. But if you've got something to tell me, I'm, a, I'm ears open always. Um, you know. So people have different perspectives in community. What does Paul mean? Be of the same mind. He, he doesn't mean agreeing about everything. He's talking about having a common attitude, uh, the same intentions, a willingness to lean in toward one another, to one another, even when people disagree. And you know what I'm talking about when I say that, right? Because when you are in a disagreement with somebody, you have some choices. What you can do is you can kind of just lean out, distance yourself, be like, okay, if you feel that way, I'm, I'm out of here. Or you can kind of force your way into that situation and tell people you are wrong. Let me tell you what is right, and you better believe me. Or you can actually do the lean-in thing. And that leaning in leans in with an ear to listen for understanding. That leaning in thing says, I care about you as a person. We're in relationship. We're part of the same community. So what you say matters to me. I might not agree with you, but we are in relationship. That is more important than being right or being wrong. So Paul says having the same mind is about putting the interests of others before your own. It's not about giving up your differences. People often like to hang out with people who are like them. And by hanging out, yes, I, okay, in person, but also on social media, right? We like to connect with people who believe the same things, who think the same way. It used to be that a lot of churches were aligned around like ethnic lines. This, for example, was a German-Russian Lutheran congregation. It's a diverse congregation now. Diversity with many cuts of diversity. And diversity is a good thing. Having the same mind means being united in our differences. It means it's not just about being polite or nice. It's about being drawn together, people who see the world differently maybe, who are coming from different backgrounds, but being united in differences. But you can't just make that happen yourselves. We can't do this on our own. Amen? That's where Paul <laughs> says we need God. We have the same mind only when that same mind is the mind of Christ. He says, have, have the mind of Christ. It's Jesus who unites us, and it's Jesus who is our model. He drives that home then by sharing the hymn that's there in verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And I have to say one more thing. When he says in you, it's not an individual you, like in you yourself. It's in y'all. It's that southern thing, right? The, in, in you, you the community. Let the mind of Jesus be in you all. He's talking about the whole community being formed by the mind of Christ. What is this mind of Christ? So imagine the people singing this part now, uh, and, and they're, they're singing it by heart. I have no idea how this hymn would have gone, okay? And actually, I don't really know a current hymn that really has these words exactly set to music, but... Think of the words, and this would have been a hymn. Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The hymn helps us think of what Jesus did for us. He had all the power of God, but he didn't grasp or keep that power for himself. And he also chose not to dominate people with that power, all that power of God. Instead, he chose to give the power away, give the power of God away, open his hands, open his life in love. He chose to become human, a human being. And not only that, to serve and to suffer and to die a criminal's death. 
Can you imagine the sacrifice God made in order to come into this world like that? That's a huge sacrifice. Uh, we get glimpses of sacrifice today. Glimpses of sacrifice in parents who will do almost anything for their children, giving up their very lives often, uh, putting the interests of their kids before their own. There's a lot of sacrifice involved in parenting. We had a glimpse of sacrifice in Dr. Don John Chang, who's parishioner of the Taiwanese church in Southern California who tackled a shooter who was going to be doing great damage in that congregation in worship, and he lost his life, Dr. Chang did, as he did that. It blows my mind as I think about the sacrifice of Jesus, the Son of God willing to give up all power, all status, all influence, come to the earth to live in poverty among us. We hear different references to that in other places in the Bible. Paul says it like this in 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Even though Jesus was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor. Matthew 23, Jesus says, the greatest among you will be your servant. And he lives that. You know, our, our culture is all about, it puts out there these messages that, that are all about moving up, moving forward, getting ahead. And it's often, don't worry about how you do it, right? You can step on people along the way. That doesn't matter. It's, it's you're number one. It's all about you. We hear those messages. It's the upward path, upward mobility that's so important. And here's Jesus choosing the downward path downward mobility. It's God coming to be with us. And somebody said Jesus stooped down so low so he'd always be below us so he'd be there to catch us when we fall. Think about Jesus. Not afraid to give up power to be right there among us. Philippians keep singing the hymn that continues. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that's above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father, the one who became poor. Uh, this one who gave it all up for us is Lord. Amen. And God exalts Jesus. That means that God says yes to Jesus, to his way of love and care and serving in humility. God's ways seem so crazy and upside down to us. Can you imagine that this is the mind of Christ? And here's the thing. It gets even crazier because Paul is saying, if this is the Jesus that we serve as Lord, then this is how we are to be as a community. Uh-oh. Uh, it's one thing, like, Jesus is like that, right? Wow. I admire Jesus. Jesus is amazing. But now it's like, I am called to have the mind of Jesus. We, as a community, are to have the mind of Jesus. We are to sing so that what we sing may be true for us. Paul is saying faith isn't faith if you're just saying the words, but you're not living it out. Amen? Amen? So think about these past two weeks. Okay, think beyond two weeks if you'd like. Think about the racial discrimination, the political backbiting, the senseless violence, the brutal shows of force in war, and on and on. When we say we believe in Jesus we're saying we reject dominance and violence and exploitation of folks. We are saying that. When will we ever figure out that violence does not solve problems? Violence does not fix anything at all. When we say we believe in Jesus, we affirm serving others peaceful words and actions, making sure all people have dignity and respects. We, we affirm that Jesus stands with all people who are vulnerable and who are marginalized in this world. We say that. 
and we're called to live that too. Amen? We sing so that what we sing may be true for us and in us as a community. It's hard to live as a community having the mind of Christ, but that, that's what we're called to do. Uh, we're not just singing. We're, we're living as a community. We're developing practices of life and faith. We're singing so, so we might see others through the eyes of Christ. We're singing so we might think through the mind of Christ. We're singing so our heart, uh, our heart would help us act toward others through the heart of Christ. And, and that's hard to do, especially as we look in our world and we see, you know, you're not going to get rich. You're not going to be popular. You're not going to be famous if you're doing these things, serving other people and putting yourself, uh, putting others before yourself. You're not going to get a prize for being really spiritual. In fact, Paul tells us in uh, verse 13, remember he's writing this from prison. He says, it's God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. You might really suffer as you follow Jesus. The reward simply might be God's good pleasure. That's it. It's what God calls us to do. So as we live and as we pray toward having the mind of Christ within us and among us as a community, God is at work in us. Amen? And so, for example, as a, a congregation seeking to live out God's mission in this neighborhood that is gentrifying, and that means folks are being displaced from homes, long-time, long-tenured folks in the hilltop, often folks of color, and there are people who are living in tents on the streets, and encampments that are throughout this neighborhood. The question is, what is God doing through us? How is God calling us to have the mind of Christ and to be active? That's what's helping us forward in discernment as a church. And one last thing I need to mention. It's amazing to be shaped as a community by this Christ hymn. Because you and I all the time fail to have the mind of Christ. But together as a community, God is working God's work through all of us. So at any given time, I might be doing really bad having the mind of Christ, but you over there might be activating your gift of leadership, and you might be activating your gift of faith, and you might be activating your gift of encouragement. And together as a community, we are journeying together with the mind of Christ that's guiding us. And there is confession, and there is forgiveness, and there are new starts. We're all in this together. God is at work in us. We are being shaped in the mind of Christ. Let's keep singing so that what we sing may be true for us. Amen. Let's sing. Hey!
Thanks be to God. We're going to now move into sharing about what's happening in the life and the ministry of the church. And on this Memorial Day weekend, I want to take some time now to honor those who have gone before us uh, serving in the military, who have lost their lives in military service. If there are any uh, who you hold in your mind or your heart, and you just like to silently be bring that name before God right now, please do that. At the same time, I want to honor those who are in our midst who serve um, or have served in the military. Are there any folks who are here today? Um, yes. God bless you. Go ahead and raise your hand up a little bit. Yep, there you go. God bless you and thank you for your service. <laughs> Wondering, looking at uh, Brendan, do you have an update today? Um, you want to share a word? Okay. Come on up as he's coming up. Um, 
sharing with you that our Sunday morning schedule is changing next Sunday. We just will have two offerings on Sunday mornings between the services. So that's from 945 to 1045. We have the children's Sunday school godly playtime. That's for children ages three up through fourth grade. And then we'll have the youth and adult Sunday school class time, which is the spiritual gifts classes. That's uh, from next Sunday onward. So just one quick um, announcement. So just a few weeks ago, we went out and cleaned, the, cleaned out the garden strip here. And there's been some more work done on that, uh, but we definitely want to keep it maintained. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to get it to where we would like to be. Um, so I was talking with uh, Mr. Craig, and he will be out there this Saturday at 930 for anybody who wants to come in and um, help out. It's going to be a number of weeks before we get it to where it needs to be. But if you have gloves, uh, we'll, there will be some, some tools on hand for you. But if you have anything that you can bring with you to help, that will be great. And if you can't come this Saturday, but you want to help at some point, um, email me and I will coordinate with, with Craig. If you can't come on the Saturday, maybe midweek, we can get out there. But um, it's, it's really important for us to be good stewards of, of the land that um, we have here. Um, and so we definitely want to make sure we're able to maintain that. Also, I'm going to be uh, putting together another round of what we did um, spring into action. We still have some things that they need to be done around here cleaning wise. And so um, there'll be more information to come. But, but if you are interested in helping um, to get on the list, I make, you know, maybe like, hey, I'll be there on a Wednesday. Can you come and help me do this? So if you're interested, feel free to shoot me an email and we can get you uh, set up. But it's really important for us to be good stewards of what God has given us. Amen. Thank you, Brendan. Brendan, our director of community engagement and outreach Part of that is community engagement and with one another, uh, growing in our fellowship and connection, especially in this pandemic time. Wondering if you might have ideas for this space, um, which would be right over here. The light is shining in this corner. Uh, we are reimagining the space in the direction of God's abundant love and welcome for all. Looking for your artist artistic ideas, your faith expressions that you would have for that area of the sanctuary, or actually for any space around here. Uh, we're looking for all sorts of creative thoughts. Please let me or Mr. Brendan know what your thoughts are. Next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, a time we celebrate the birthday of the church. As the Holy Spirit comes and enlivens the church, uh, we will read that story back in the day of what happened. It's also our Time to celebrate graduates connected to Peace Lutheran Church and Peace Community Center and celebrate the confirmation of three young people. This is going to be a special day in worship at 11 o'clock, especially next Sunday. So please um, be prayerful about that and hope you're able to come. It is good to respond to God's gifts with our offerings and grateful for the ways that you are using your time, talent, and treasure to serve God in the world. And also your, your offerings, your financial offerings to the church. There's an offering box that's on the welcome table. You can also give by sending it to the church in the mail or going online or setting up electronic giving. If you are interested in a class uh, about learning more about faith in God and service through Peace Lutheran Church, I'm offering this next Saturday, June 11th. So it's not this coming Saturday, but the next one. And it's going to be from 10 to 2.30. There is a lunch that we have as part of the class. We'll be talking about lots of things. It will serve especially well for folks who would like to join the church, make that commitment to be part of this faith community. But that is not required. If you just want to come to the class, Foundations of Faith and Peace, I would love to, to have you there. Let me know if you can come. Also, this Tuesday, May 31st, is a Native American Justice Workshop series, the conclusion of that series with a movie, a, a, a film, Dawnland, a documentary about cultural survival and stolen children. And there's a panel discussion that's going to be led by Reverend Irvin Porter. That's all by Zoom. It is this Tuesday evening at 6.30, not 6 o'clock, 6.30. There's a registration link, and you'll be able to get the Zoom link that way. 
If you are interested in helping to serve or lead in worship, that would be wonderful. Assisting minister, usher, greeter. Uh, what else we got? Audiovisual assistant. That's a good one, right? Did you know you're called that? Don, back there, he's got all sorts of different titles. You're called lots of things, yes. We're grateful for you back there. And we also could use some help. So let me know if you'd like some training for that, to be involved in that way. I'm going to um, invite uh, Myra forward to help gather our thanksgivings and prayer concerns now. Lift them up to God in prayer. So we're opening up for um, celebrations. Um, if anybody has any celebrations, uh, birthdays, or so forth, um, you can raise your hand. I'll, and I'll come to you if you have something to celebrate. My brother's birthday was May 13th, and um, he was turned 62. And my sister's birthday was May 4th. She turned 55. And um, I have seen both of them, and my daughter. I saw my daughter um, after a year. I walked out of Western State in uh, rehabilitation. She turned around, she came driving by on her van and said, hi, mom. <laughs> yeah. I met my grandson. Sebastian. Thank you, Casey. Great to see you today for worship. God bless you. Thanksgivings. Yeah, two things. Uh, one is uh, the board, Sound Transit Board, voted to extend the pilot program that I'm a part of to the end of this uh, calendar year. So thankful for that. And uh, also just we'll be praying for them to make the program permanent coming in 2023. Second thing, too, just want to celebrate kind of a week early, but Carissa is graduating from Luther Seminary with her Masters of Arts and Religion next week. And just want to lift her up and thank God for her. So there you go. Wonderful. Come over. I have a praise and a prayer request combo. Um, this week, I was offered and accepted uh, English teaching. English teaching. Easy for me to say. English teaching pr um, position at Mount Tahoma High School. So I'll be joining Mount Tahoma in the fall. And. Uh, the prayer request is um, I am leaving my school, Kentwood High School, uh, after 21 years. So I want closure there and to leave on the right way. And so looking for that. Thank you. Congratulations and blessings in that transition, Jay. Oh, thank you. I want to praise the Lord that uh, Burns x-rays came out that his wrist is no longer broken. So his cast is coming off Tuesday. And Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Praise God. Wanting to lift up, um, this is the AAPI Heritage Month, and we give thanks to God for the gifts of Asian American and Pacific Islander communities in this month. Yes. So now we're going to turn to uh, prayers, uplift prayers. Um, for If you have, have a prayer, please uh, raise your hand. Thank prayers you. of concern. I'll come. Mari. Uh, continued prayers for my daughter and her husband, Ariella and Kyle, who experienced COVID this week with a very bad case. Uh, so it's been a tough week for me as well because it, it was a rough case. But they are on the mend. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for the prayers from this community. So. Um, I'm sorry. Mine's not really like a concerning prayer. <laughs> so I kind of feel bad saying it. But it's just something that I want in my heart. But um, so my school, they offer like the graduation stole things, you know. And sadly, they only have 10 for African American. So I put my name on the list, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get it. Um, I really want it, though, because <laughs> I want to represent my, you know, my culture and everything. So I hope that I get that one. I've been praying because um, I've been really good this year at school. <laughs> And I don't know how they determine who's going to get it, um, but it would be, it would touch me very much so to have one of those um, when I graduate. Um, I have one from Gail, Gail Stairs online, um, praying for her sister Sue and her husband Bob. 
uh, he's now in the hospital with, with COVID. Um, and also safe travels for her friend from Singapore who are, who arrive next Saturday. Yeah, first for Lisa, she's been sick for a week now. It's hard to get into a doctor. Our doctor's out sick. <laughs> um, been to the emergency room and urgent care, and they have some theories, but they're not sure what it is. But uh, it's not COVID. <laughs> so, it's yes, not praying. Oh, I have a a few. My nephew was very sick. He was bleeding internally. So continuing prayers for him. He is out of the hospital now, but he's doing well. Prayers for the family that because we've lost another brother in our family and prayers for my daughter. She's got something going on. We're not exactly sure yet, but prayers for her that everything's going to be all right. And one more prayer. <laughs> the ex-husband of mine, he is still in bad shape. He's out of the hospital, but he still has a chest tube in. And I just pray for him because he is the father of my children. Um, I would like to ask for prayers for all of the people of the um, Sierra Pacific Synod right now in our denomination, um, which is going through quite a bit of turmoil, um, in particular for the friends of mine who have calls in that synod. I'd like to say a prayer for those with Parkinson's <laughs> disease, for those with HIV, for those with AIDS. Virginia Mason has got a good commercial on TV. Uh, thank you, Lord. I guess I'll say a prayer for, for all of us who are experiencing trauma of uh, what happens in our nation. I just want to read a text that I wrote to Carissa, if you all will bear with me. Uh, I feel like I'm numb to all the shootings. I'm tired of it, I'm powerless over it, feel hopeless, and, I, uh, uh, and it won't change, so I don't want to think about it. But as a person of faith in Jesus, I know Jesus is with us in it. Jesus, help us figure out what to do for the grieving families, for people who believe shooting others will fix anything, for the policymakers who profit off of gun sales, for those who feel uh, overwhelmed and not sure what to do and how to respond. For the children who go to school every day wondering if they will be safe. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you. We also have one issue here, too. The young lady. One of my favorite teachers is being displaced to a different school this year, so I just hope her transition is easy. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, Rob got a concussion a few weeks ago. Um, he was trying to play basketball with some kids at school and hit his head pretty hard um, and has been not released to go back to work for about three weeks now. So just prayers that um, he'll be able to maybe, the next appointment will be good and he can finish the school year with his kids. Prayers for Rob. Um, just prayers for kids as we're finishing up the last few weeks of school. Um, at my school especially, we're seeing a lot of students acting out, having really poor behavior just because I think of the insecurity of what summer means for them and not having that consistency of school every day. So, Thank you, Pauline. Um, I want to say a prayer for my grandson that broke his humor bone and um, just to help him heal. He decided not to have surgery, so it'll be a longer healing process. Let us bow our heads. Lord, we come to you with our prayers and we come to you with our celebrations of life. Lord, please be with these families for all of our prayer requests, children, all of the things that are going on in the world. We might not know what's going on in the world right now, but we know that we have faith in you, Lord. Yes. Lord, we just lift up our hands um, to be more, to be there for each other, to reach out to each other, 
um, to pray for these families and the best thing we can do right now um, for one another with their prayer concerns, maybe reach out to a friend, reach out to someone, um, sit in silence. Um, Lord, there's so many things that we can do to be there for others, to show peace. Um, we lift these things in your name, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God, we're grateful that you are our peace in a world of turmoil and chaos and violence. We pray that we might receive your very presence in this meal of love and we might be sent out to be sharers of love, sharers of that peace with all we meet. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is our Lord's meal and all are welcome to share in this meal. Trusting the promises of God are for all of us. If you are at home um, worshiping remotely today, it's time now to find the bread, wine, or grape juice and receive those with the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Um, here in person, please follow the instruction of the ushers to come forward and you'll receive a bread and you'll keep moving and you'll receive a wine or grape juice. The wine is the dark cup, the grape juice is the light cup. Place your cup into the tray and then continue back to your seat. We'll be going this direction on this side and this direction on this side. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. And please let me know if you'd like a gluten-free option for bread.
please stand and receive words of blessing before we go today. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. May God bless you to be a blessing this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.